Another good, big, big, good, good morning to you. We had a good camping trip, lots of fish. Tom and I could tell you some miracles about those fish. And the longer the story, the bigger the fish will get, but there was some good fishing. But yesterday we went singing. You know what I enjoy about singing? I enjoy preaching at singing now. It used to be I didn't care. Wanted to get it over with, get home and do whatever. Now I actually enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit when you speak about it. You know, God's word is alive if you preach it with conviction. It becomes alive. Amen. It's the only, it's what sets <clears throat> the word of God and Christianity apart from all other religions. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that breathes life into your words. And you can't, attribute that to any one person it's just it's the holy spirit he does that and he is together with the truth so you can't separate them so the word is truth which is jesus christ and together with the holy spirit they have the ability to set you free and to keep you free my today's message i'm going to go way back to when i first became saved with a scripture that got thrown in our face all the time and all of us know this, context matters when it comes to scriptures. You cannot, I cannot quote you, if I'm talking about salvation, I have to stick with the subject. 
if I'm talking about, about whatever it is I am talking about, I need to keep things in context and use scripture to clarify. You cannot take one scripture and one verse for your personal doctrine and for your own benefit. It doesn't work that way. That means that scripture does not mean what you think it means because you need other scriptures to back that scripture up. And today I'm going to prove that and, uh, with the verse that, I'm not going to mention the verse yet, but I want that message to be titled with that verse. So Tom, take note. But before I start the message, I want to uh, get into the theme of my main message. I want to refresh your minds on how we are saved and how we are kept by the mighty hand of God. That needs to be first uh, made clear in your own minds. In Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 10, out of the King James Version, it says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, Remember that. It has nothing to do with you. The only thing that happened that you did, you called upon the name of the Lord. That's all you did. And it is what? A gift from God. You had nothing to do with that. That was a gift. of Salvation is a gift. Isn't that beautiful? If we cannot rejoice in that alone, we are to be pitied. That is to me the greatest prize that I own and possess is my salvation. So context is of utmost importance when it comes to interpreting Scripture. This here is the, the gift of salvation is a gift. Treasures in heaven, though, have to be earned. Salvation is free. So to get treasures in heaven, that's a totally different story. That's not salvation. That's a treasure in your heart. Jesus' kingdom is within you. So he made that sure. So, verse 9, it ends, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it takes all bragging rights away from you. Your salvation has absolutely nothing to do with you. So once you get saved, you have to pay rent. No, it was, it's free. It'll stay free for eternity. That was a gift given to you. If you've received that gift, you thank God for that. In verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus Unto good works, which God has before ordained, that we should walk in them. So God works salvation within you. You have to work it out. That's how it works. So the outward part is your job. God did the inward part. He made that job complete. And there's a scripture for that, by the way. So in other words, don't focus on other people. You focus on yourself and be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks of the hope that is within you. That's how it works. So once you belong to the Lord, once you belong to the Lord, He guides your path with His loving hand, and if need be, He chastens with His chastening hand to correct us if we stray. That's how it works. In Hebrews 12, verse 6, it says, For whom the Lord loves, He chastens. And again, I'm setting up something here. You'll remember this once I get into the next verse, to that verse where my message is based upon. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son and daughter whom he receives. In Jude 1, verse 24, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from what? From falling. And to present you. Who's presenting who? He's presenting you faultless before the presence of his, glor of his glory in it, with exceeding joy. That's the gift part of you that has been given to you. That is complete and done with. And again, I had that last message. This is God's reputation at stake here. His promise. He is the one that's put his name at stake for this promise, not yours. Only thing that, that, that falls to us is that we call upon the name of the Lord. And when do you call upon the name of the Lord? When you realize you're in dire straits. I'm in trouble. I need help. That's when that happens. Now, before I get into my the main theme of my message, let's rise and ask the Lord for wisdom and understanding. To, in, 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 in understanding. Heavenly Father, I praise you and thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have your word to stand by. And Lord Jesus, you will make it crystal clear on how things work, that, that uh, context is very important, and the power of your Holy Spirit in, uh, is very important when it comes to interpreting Scripture also. So, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome to, to, to uh, invade us, invade our private moments, our hearts, everything about us, our minds, 
and show us how much you dear, how dearly you love us and that you want to overtake every part of us. In Jesus' name I ask that. Amen. You may be seated. There is a scripture when I first got saved. It was always held in our face, and it was this. And I'm going to first quote it in German. Wer beharret an Sende, der wird selig. And it was taken to this level. Wer beharret an Sende, der wird erst selig. So they would put the emphasis on what that means. In, in English, it's like this. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Now, if I hold this scripture up against what I just read you, how would that fare? You think there's a bit of confusion there? All of a sudden, it's up to me to endure to the end. I have to do something. I have to hold on. Does that make sense? Something's not right here. And that's what got me to thinking. So context is extremely important. So let's go to the beginning of the chapter and see who Jesus really is talking to. So see, see who he's talking to. Matthew 10, verse 5 to 8. These 12 Jesus sent forth. So first of all, who is he talking to? His disciples. And he commended them, saying, Go not into the ways of the Gentiles. So who is he talking to? He's talking to the Jews. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. That would be us, the Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritans, of the Samaritans enter you not. It's very specific who he's talking to here. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So this command goes to the church also. Though. I'm not excluding the church, but I'm still saying this was specific for them. But this in particular is, is a message for us still today. It did not go out with the apostles, but it's still for today. And then he goes on to say in verse 17, but, be, but beware of men, for they shall deliver you up to the council, and they sh will scourge you, where? In their synagogues. So he's still very specific on who he's talking to, to the Jews, to the, to the, to the disciples. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, for a testimony against who? Against the Gentiles. And you shall be hated, to verse 22, of all men, for my name's sake, again, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. This verse has absolutely nothing to do with salvation of the soul, but it's talking about a physical rescue of God's elect, the Jews, from the Antichrist at the end of the tribulation, and I have scripture for that. These scriptures that we just read here, they cover 2,000 years of Jewish history. It covered right from they were sent right till the end. Listen to the next ones, and I will prove it to you with Scripture, like I said. Matthew 24, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. He, now, now we're in the tribulation here. But for whose sake? The elect. Who are the elect? Not the church. We're, not, we're the church of Jesus. We're the bride of Christ. The elect are the Jews. For the elect's sake, and for a certain type of Jew, not just for all the Jews, I'll show you that too. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So who are the elect? Y yes, and again, a lot of this has also happened to lots of Christians that have, these things happen also to believers. But Jesus is very specific on who he's talking to in these scripture. Go, let's go into Mark See what Mark, uh, Mark's account is of this. Mark 13, verse 13 to verse 20. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now let's look back in history, even into this present day. Who are the most persecuted people on the planet? Who is it? It's the Jews. During World War II, they were, they were rejected by most of the nations, if not all. I think one nation accepted them in their very own. Right? That's where they were reborn or born again. In 1939, 907 Jewish refugees flew, uh, fled the Nazi, Nazi Germany aboard the MS St. Louis. 
On June 7, 1939, they were denied entry into Canada. They also were refused entry into Cuba, into, into numerous Latin American countries, and including the United States of America. They did not allow the Jews to come in, simply because they were Jews. Over 90% of the people that got killed by the Nazi, by Nazi German uh, concentration camps were Jews. 90% of the 6 million or 7, whatever the number is, they were Jews. Hitler's so-called Untermenschen, which means subhuman, he labeled them as subhuman, were the Jews who he blamed for the reason Germany lost World War I and also placed the blame on the Jews for all other social problems that they had at the time, simply, again, because they were Jews. So continuing in Mark 13, verse 14, it says, now we're in the tribulation. It's continuing along that same context of scriptures. But when you shall see the abomination of the desolation, who is that? What is that? I'll explain that. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that reads understand. Again, this refers to context. Understand, what am I talking about? This is the Antichrist standing in the temple, saying that he is God. And let them that be in Judea, who is he talking to again? The Jews. Flee to the mountains. So he, there's a remnant coming. Watch, watch this. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into his house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Let him that is in the field not turn back again to, for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Pray that your flight be not in winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. This world has never seen anything what's coming. This is why it's referred to as the great tribulation. Brother Steve had a message on that. that great, they call it the great escape. It is a time of wrath, God's wrath. And we are not appointed to God's wrath. Somebody else is, and I'm going to explain that too. And again, here it says, verse 20, And except that the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. Why is he saying that? He's talking about being saved here. He's not talking about salvation here, guys. Remember, context is important. But for whose sake? The elect again. It's God's chosen people, which are the Jews. Whom he has chosen, he has shortened those days. So he'll call them short. So the Jews will endure to this end. The Jews that will endure to that end will be rescued. I'll go into Romans to explain more of this. Romans 9, verse 27. Isaiah speaking, also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of Israel, of the, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sands of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. That means a small part of them will be saved. All of that small part will be saved. The rest... I'll read about that too. Romans 9, verse 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Romans 11, verse 25 to 28. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own con uh, conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come. That's turning back to us now for a little bit. What is the fullness of the Gentiles? That's when the Apostle Paul stopped preaching to the Jews. He still did, but he turned to the Gentiles. God called him to the Gentiles. Until the dispensation, it's called dispensation of grace. We are now living in the great dispensation of grace era where God uh, rain falls on the good, the bad, whoever alike. God makes no separation or distinction between any religion group or anybody on this planet. You almost don't recognize where God is unless you have a relationship with him. That's how much God is a mystery now. During the tribulation, it will not be like that. They will not say that there is no God because they will curse him. They will see him clearly. 
And that's when the time of the Gentile is fulfilled and God turns his attention back to the Jews. And that will happen at the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. And so, verse 26, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Well, see here you have to distinction again. Not all Israel will be saved. The part will be saved that was left. They all got saved because all Israel will not be saved. And again, I will use scripture for that. But yes, he is right in retrospect because the part that remains, every one of them will be saved and there's a reason they get saved. I'll get into that too. Actually, it, 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 it actually states it right after that. So all of Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn on God and is away from Jacob. God is going to do something that will cause them to be saved. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. So in verse 28 says, uh, says this, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies. So you now take Israel as a whole. They are enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ as a whole, as a nation. But as touching election, look, pay attention to this word, context is very important. They are beloved for the Father's sake. So when it comes to the Bible talking about the elect, he is talking about the Jews, not the church. Zechariah, verse 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David, very specific, the Israel, and upon the inhabitants of who? Jerusalem. The spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one that mourns for his only son. And they shall be in bitterness. They will be so deep to bitterness. And not a bad bitterness, a repentant, knowing what they have done to Jesus Christ. For him as, for one, uh, for, uh, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So... In one second, they will look upon him whom they have pierced and see, oh God, what have we done? And so all of Israel that has left that remnant will be saved. So one final scripture that really puts the icing on the cake on the whole thing is Zechariah 13, verse 8 to 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord, talking about Israel, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. That's two-thirds of Israel will be destroyed of the people. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through what? The fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call upon my name and I will hear them. And I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord my God. Can you imagine that moment, what's going to happen there? In one second, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. God's going to do a miracle there. He's going to show himself. They will see the abomination of the desolation, which is Antichrist. Then they will know, oh my God, something's wrong here. And then Jesus will reveal himself to that remnant that is left over. And they will, with one unison, will cry out, oh my God, what have we done? And so here you have it, my friends, a remnant or one-third of Israel will be saved. And it will be all those Jews that endured to the end of the great tribulation that will be saved. So the scripture that they used, even they told, uh, as they told us, we're, 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 we're picking out verses that suit us. When in retrospect, they were doing the same thing, using one scripture taken out of context and pointing it back at us. Oh, those that will endure to the end will be saved when it does not even mean what they thought it meant. That scripture has nothing to do with the salvation, but with a group of people that God, Jesus Christ is talking to, that they that will endure to the end, Jesus is going to save. He's going to cut it short and save them. That's what that scripture is talking about. So you are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Keep that in mind. The Lord bless you. And make you a blessing. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. 
I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is Jesus, over every heart and every mind.